Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to the video, but also welcome to my new detailing studio. Now, if you don't already know, I've spent the last year and a bit managing the construction of my new space here and it is finally done and ready for me to work in. So now is the perfect time to give you guys a tour of the space. All right guys, well, just before we get started here, I wanted to just say quickly again, how excited I am to finally be at this point. Now this build took quite a long time and I've also put a ton of my own time and energy into this thing. So uh, it's very rewarding to finally be here and yeah, it really is just a dream come true. But anyways, uh, as we kick things off here, I figured we'd start with the floors. It's one of my you know most favorite things that I have in the space here. So um, what you guys are looking at here is a, uh, a polyaspartic floor coating. Now you're probably going to hear me say this a lot through this video, but um, as I, I, uh, I documented all the, the construction process over on the second channel, the Detail Geek 2, uh, I think it was episode 7 where they coated the floors and uh, you can see the entire, um, the entire installation process, but basically this is a two-part floor system. There's a base coat um, and then the flakes go down, the chip goes down and, uh, and then the top coat goes on top and it's an extremely durable uh, really beautiful floor. And yeah, not only is it a really good looking floor, it's also extremely easy to clean. And one of the other things that uh, that I did in here was uh, because obviously, uh, you know, when I'm cleaning vehicles that are extremely dirty, uh, the floor gets very dirty as well. And to make it easier on myself to clean the floor, I also had uh, had the grade beams here uh, coated with the same, the same polyaspartic coating as well. So basically this forms a completely watertight floor as uh, as this is completely sealed in here so it's gonna make cleaning the floor uh, a lot easier and uh, yeah if anything does you know, dirt or anything gets splashed up on here it's super easy to clean. Right, well now speaking of cleaning the floor you might be wondering where all the mud and the water is gonna go uh, well the entire floor is sloping towards this giant drain pit that I've got here it is three feet wide by three feet deep uh, and five feet long. It's a two compartment precast concrete drain pit. And yeah, it's gonna hold, it's gonna hold a lot of mud. So uh, I'm very excited to get this thing filled up and nice and dirty, but uh, yeah, it works the exact same way as the other one did in my other garage. Um, everything kind of drains in, into the big side first and the dirt has a chance to settle out before it flows into the smaller compartment. It can then settle again before it finally makes its way out the drain. And all of that leads to a 1500 gallon holding tank that I've got outside the building. And then in terms of what I've got covering the pit, uh, on the big side here, it is one and an eighth inch thick steel grating, uh, which I actually had to do some modifications to, to, uh, to actually get it to fit in here. You would have seen that in, in episode 11 of the Studio Build series, but then on the, uh, on the smaller side here, I just went with uh, quarter inch uh, diamond plating and just, Painted that with tramp flat paint. Um, I don't know, looks good and yeah, can't wait to get this thing full of mud. Okay, with the floor covered, I figured now was a good time to run through the exterior and the overall size of the building. So the dimensions of the building are 46 feet by 66 feet, with the studio accounting for about one third of that space as it's 30 feet wide by 34 feet deep, meaning it's about eight feet deeper than my garage was. And then the rest of the space is the shop side, mechanical room and the bathroom. And in terms of what the exterior was finished with, I went with this select composite siding and board and batten on the front of the studio, which I think looks really awesome. Then for the overhead doors, all three are the same size at 12 feet wide by 10 feet tall, so they can accommodate larger vehicles. And the roof is covered with IKO Cambridge architectural shingles. All right, well, another really cool thing about the space besides the floor is what I did on the walls here. So this is a PVC slot wall product. Uh, it's very easy to clean, which is great, and it does come in a few different colors. So I went with this uh, this darker gunmetal color here, kind of two strips on the bottom, um, basically just to break it up, make it look a little better, accent things a little bit. Um, but yeah, really the I guess the purpose of doing the slot wall in the studio here was uh, this whole space has been designed to be with moisture in mind. So being that you know I'm detailing in here and I'm running a pressure washer for hours, it's a bit of a moist environment and things can get splashed on the wall. So I didn't want drywall in here because water and drywall don't mix. So uh, the PVC slot wall was kind of just the perfect, perfect choice and the perfect option for my purposes. Uh, but one of the other really cool things about this slot wall 
is that you can get accessories for it so you can hang, you know, basically whatever you want, brooms, shovels, squeegee, which I'll use to clean the floor. And I've also got my back hose hung here. And then over here on the other side, I've you know got my undercarriage washer sitting here. And I kind of always planned to have these, uh, these, these shelves here. Um, basically just as a gear shelf, so I had, uh, you know, had a couple of plugs put in, so my plan is going to have all my camera gear, uh, you know, kind of sitting here and charging uh, sort of thing. Uh, but in terms of, I guess, other kind of electrical that I did in here, basically um, I did a plug on every, well, a couple of plugs on every wall. I'm kind of a, a big proponent of having a lot of plugs everywhere because you never want to be trying to find one. So I maybe went overkill, but um, that's kind of just the way I'm wired. So uh, yeah, I got a couple of couple of plugs on the front wall here, and then right underneath the TV here, I've got one of my vac outlets. Um, I'll touch more on the vacuum a little bit later, but yeah, I've got two in here, one here, and then there's another one over on the side wall as well. All right, well, while we're talking about electrical, I figured we'd uh, next go to kind of how the whole place is being lit. And so what I've got in here are six Lithonia High Bay LED fixtures. These things put out 15,000 lumens per light. And uh, yeah, they are extremely, extremely bright in here. So um, I love everything about these lights. I went with 4, 000, a 4,000 color temperature light in here. And yeah, it's fantastic. Obviously for detailing and, you know, you know, um, you know washing and cleaning vehicles in here, I need a lot of light, um, especially for, uh, you know, for paint correction and whatnot. You need to be able to see what you're doing. So uh, having a bright space was, uh, yeah, just kind of necessary. Oh, and while we're talking about things up on the ceiling, I almost forgot to tell you what I finished the ceiling with. So uh, what's up there is white PVC panels. And basically the reason I went with this, you know, instead of drywall, uh, was from the moisture standpoint. Basically everything in the studio has been designed uh, with moisture in mind. Um, not that I'm really expecting to be spraying the ceiling with water or anything splashing up there, but uh, I just knew that I didn't want drywall anywhere anywhere in here and the PVC panels were kind of just the perfect choice for that. Uh, one other thing that's up there as well is uh, a ceiling fan. So I've got one fan in the studio here, uh, kind of just for, for airflow and to help uh, help the floor dry a little quicker when it's wet. Um, I have two ceiling fans over in the, in the shop side. And you might be asking yourself, why did you go with these fans instead of something like a big ass fan? And basically the reason is price. Those things are really, really pricey, and I found I found fans that were uh, equally as strong and powerful uh, for a fraction of the cost. These are um, they have DC motors. They're really quiet. Um, they move a ton of air, and yeah, I just uh, I couldn't stomach paying the price, but uh, these should uh, these should serve the job well. Now, one of the other really cool things that I did with the lighting in here was I had LED strip lighting uh, run all along the grade beam in here. Uh, as well as underneath the two upper cabinets, but um, yeah, I just went with white. You can obviously go with uh, you know the R RGB uh, color strips, where you can do kind of any any color. But I personally just felt that white looked the best, so yeah, I think it turned out really good. All right, well now you guys have already seen this in a couple shots in this video, but this is my giant Detail Geek sign. This sign measures uh, 10 feet wide by roughly four feet tall, and. Yeah, I think it looks fantastic. Um, these letters here are pin mounted. I went pin mounted, so they're raised off the back just a little bit and kind of just gives it a little bit more definition, um, kind of brings it to life. And yeah, the guys did a really, really good job with this and I'm extremely happy with how it turned out. I think this looks awesome in here. All right, well, another thing that I think looks really good in here uh, are my cupboards. Now, if you guys were following the Studio Build series, you would have seen these get installed, I think back in episode nine it was. And yeah, basically what you're looking at is, uh, you know, modular cabinets. They're, they don't break the bank, but they're pretty good, pretty good construction. They're sturdy enough. And uh, so because they're modular, I kind of had my choice of, um, you know, design layout sort of thing. So I went with a symmetrical design, um, did two, you know, 36 inch wide lockers, kind of one on either side. And, um, you know, had a, some choices with, uh, with the bottom cupboards here, kind of went with a, you know, a bit of a variety of, uh, of drawer options and uh, yeah but one of the best things about these cupboards is not only do they look good but when I'm cleaning a dirty floor in here I don't have to worry about these getting splashed a little bit they're not going to soak up water like my my cabinets did uh, you know back in my old garage so they're easy to clean and yeah they just 
they look they look really good. Um, very happy with how they how they turned out. So um, I haven't moved all my stuff in here yet, but it's kind of a work in progress right now. I've got I guess most of it's here, but uh, so I can show you in a couple of the drawers. I'm sure you're curious to see how, how I kind of laid everything out. But uh, up here, I just kind of got my gloves for now. Uh, here I got kind of all my uh, polishing pads and some of my microfiber applicator pads there. Got a drawer of brushes, so that's nice and nice and organized for me. A whole bunch of wash mitts. Yeah, wash mitts here. And then the bottom drawer, just a whole pile of towels. I've got a lot more than that, but uh, yeah, I just, they didn't all fit in there, so. Uh, what else can I show you? Oh, this is, this is the fun cupboard. No, it's not what you think. It's just where I keep all my DG stuff. <laughs> so yeah, looks good. All the, uh, the go-to chemicals are there, so yeah. So these are really nice, but uh, yeah. Uh, what else can we talk about here? Oh, so obviously I've got a sink in here. Um, this I think is actually the exact same style of sink that I have uh, in my old garage, but it's nice and big. Uh, I can fill you know wash buckets and, and whatnot uh, in there. And yeah, and then also got a TV in here, so um, I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, the last episode of the studio build series uh, is when I hung this on the wall. Yeah, you also would have seen me uh, run. I've got some conduit running in behind this uh, this TV to the other side of the wall over in the in the shop. Ran an HDMI cable through there. Uh, I plan to have a desk area kind of on the other side of the wall. That way I can kind of set up my computer and uh, kind of run stuff off my computer to the TV, but probably a good time we can uh, we'll go check out the shop site now. All right, guys, well, this is the shop side. And you might be asking yourself, why do you have two sides of the building here? What are you doing on this side? And I know I've, I've seen lots of comments in the studio build episodes, people kind of wondering what I was doing with this side of the building and you know what the purpose of it is. So basically it is kind of personal storage and uh, kind of a bit of, just a bit of a workspace for me. Um, so obviously like, this is where you know the Bobcat is parked. Uh, tractors parked in here. I store my quad in here as well. I've also got you know just a whole bunch of other personal stuff in here. Uh, a whole bunch of uh, Detail Geek Auto Care product for you know when I eventually get Canadian operations set up and going. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a nice space to have now, uh, and be, you know I'm able to kind of separate the the workspace from kind of the play space, if you will, and uh, yeah. Anyways, but in terms of the finishings in here, uh, largely it's very much the same as the studio side. So you'll notice that the floor is coated with the same polyaspartic floor coating. And the one thing that is different though, are these drain pits. Now I've got two drain pits in here, um, basically for, you know, you bring a, bring a wet, uh, wet vehicle, wet bobcat tractor, uh, quad, whatever in here. So there's, you know, gonna be somewhere for the water to run it all. Oh, is tied into the uh, the holding tank outside but you'd probably be familiar with these drain pits uh, you'd seen it in the main channel videos uh, this is the exact same drain pit that I have in my garage uh, back at the house and yeah same thing two compartments and yeah and uh, just lets uh, somewhere for the, the dirty water to go but yeah these would be good to have over the winter when you know you have uh, wet vehicles come in here um, but also makes it really easy when I'm cleaning the floor the water's got somewhere to go Okay, so another thing that I did a little bit differently over here in the shop is uh, what I did on the grade beams here. Now, in the studio, you know, I did the polyaspartic coating up the grade beam, um, kind of to make the floor watertight. That wasn't as much of a concern over here because this floor is just not gonna get as dirty. Uh, cleaning, it's gonna be a lot easier. You can kind of do it with the broom and the hose. Um, don't need the pressure washer where it would be kind of spraying up on, on everything, but, um, did go with a waterproof material here. It's paylite, so if it does get wet and splashed, it's again very easy to clean, and uh, yeah, obviously can can get wet. So now, in terms of what I did on the walls, you'll notice that it's the same slot wall as, as the studio side, uh, and this is really where you know, the slot wall uh, comes in really handy. Is you know you can you can put anything on these hooks, um, you know, all sorts of stuff, and it just gets it up off the floor, and it's a lot more organized. Really, it, it just it just looks good, and it's super functional. Uh, the one thing that is different, though, is I did an extra row of the the gunmetal on this side, 
just because it was a bit of big, bigger space and yeah, it just kind of seemed like it was the thing to do, but um, there is a little bit of drywall in the shop and we'll go show you over there now. All right, well, this is obviously the space that has drywall. This is just in behind the studio, kind of around the corner. Um, yeah, I didn't do slat wall here because it really, I don't know, kind of just easier to do drywall over here. This is gonna end up likely just being storage. Uh, probably throw some stuff above the, the bathroom here as well. Um, obviously that is that is the bathroom. Um, pretty basic, but uh, you know, toilet and sink, everything, everything a guy needs. So um, yeah, I do have this desk here. I was talking about the, so the conduit from in behind the TV in the studio runs in just in behind this desk here. So the plan, I'm probably just gonna throw my computer here. Uh, maybe run some stuff to the TV off of the computer and um, yeah, I don't know. This desk is a hunk of junk. I picked it up super cheap. It was like 10 bucks um, somewhere to sit and do some work and uh, I don't know, maybe stream at some point, maybe do streams out here, but um, yeah. Okay, so moving along the back wall a bit, uh, this is where I've got some cupboards over here. Uh, I've got about 12 feet of cupboards and really these are just for more storage space. Um, I got some tools and other stuff uh, in here. Most of it's empty at this point, to be honest, but um, countertop, I just went with, uh, what is it? Eighth inch steel plate. Uh, and yeah, just painted with uh, with trim clad. Got a sink out here again. Um, yeah, not, not too much to say about this. Um, the cupboards are basically, they're just melamine cupboards and then the fronts are a high pressure laminate from Tefisa. So kind of a unique look. Uh, I don't know, I think they look pretty good, but yeah, carrying along here, uh, you might've noticed these boxes. I talked about them earlier. All of these, well, there's a little bit of extra wiring from when I did all the wiring in the building here. Um, but this is all Detail Geek Auto Care stock. Uh, um, hopefully gonna get Canadian operations set up at some point, but I've got stuff sitting here waiting. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, this building, there's a lot of storage going on in here. So just, just a bunch of, uh, bunch of my stuff basically. Um, but yeah, that kind of takes care of everything on this side. So why don't we go check out things in the mechanic room? All right, well, this is the mechanical room and this is where all the fun stuff is. So the first of that being uh, my new pressure washer. Um, you might ask, why did I get a new one? Well, it's not really a new one. I bought the same, basically the same pressure washer again. This is a 1900 PSI electric Bertolini pressure washer that pushes two gallons a minute. Basically the exact same uh, pressure washer that I have, uh, you know, been using for the last couple of years now. And uh, it's an absolutely awesome unit. Um, I haven't had a single issue with mine and that's ultimately why I bought another one uh, for out here. So but yeah, I just got this stuff all hooked up last week i think it was um you if you've watched episode 12 of the studio build series uh you would have seen this uh, kind of getting installed here but uh the only kind of important thing i guess about this is that it does need a 20 amp uh 20 amp line um which is good because i ran that when we did electrical in here so um have appropriate power for it and then over here on the wall here uh this is obviously the uh kind of the the water supply here so that's my cold line and then I've got a hotline as well. Um, basically I can mix in hot water if if I need to, uh, for kind of things like, you know, wheel wells that are full of frozen mud or something. Uh, it's not too often that I need hot water. So I know I've seen a lot of questions about, you know, do I use a hot water uh, pressure washer? And no, I don't. I just mix in some, some hot water when I need to. And uh, yeah, it works great. So. So just on the other side of the wall is where the hose reel is mounted and uh, it's going to be really nice to have that over there. Be able to keep the unit in the mechanical room and just have the hose on the other side uh, is great. Uh, but what really makes that possible is, is actually this wall mount. It comes with a remote controlled auto start stop feature. So when it's turned on, the pump is just in standby and it's not actually running until I pull the trigger on the handle as the, the handle actually has a remote transmitter in it sends a signal to this thing to turn on and then boom, I got the uh, pressure washer kicks on and I got water. So um, yeah, so the next thing here is, this is my vacuum. And um, I've probably mentioned a few times before, but I this is an upgrade. So I went with a dual motor vacuum flow unit. It is uh, needs 240 volt power. So it's 
it's a bit of a bit of a, a beefy uh, beefy vacuum here. But yeah, it's the same vacuum flow brand that I have uh, been using for the last couple of years at the house. Very high quality. That was one thing I knew I wanted to upgrade here when you know kind of moving out to the new space. Um, so I'm very excited to uh, very excited to use it. It's supposed to have about double the suction that my other vacuum does. So um, yeah, should be a lot of fun to use. But uh, one thing that was kind of I guess unique about this is that because it has two motors, um, the exhaust runs very, very hot. So I actually had to get metal exhaust tubing, um, which wasn't the easiest thing to find around here, but uh, did that and yeah. And then this, I guess this here is just kind of the, um, like the, the inlet. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, I've got two vac outlets uh, in the studio, one on the side wall and then one kind of up on the front beside the TV. Uh, moving up, I guess, is the HRV. So the HRV is basically uh, an air-to-air -air exchanger. All right, well, moving on now, and this is uh, this is my furnace here. So obviously it's a gas furnace. A um, little different though than than the garage used to be. I used to you know use a, a unit heater in there, a gas unit unit heater, and uh, now in the building here we've got a, a whole furnace. But uh, that also allows me to have air conditioning, which is going to be <laughs> it's going to be huge. It's going to be really really nice to have. Not have to sweat my butt off in uh, you know 35 degrees Celsius weather. Um, so it'll be really really nice to have, to have air conditioning in the building here. The one unique thing about this furnace though is that I did go with a dual zone system. So basically what that means is uh, I can control the temperature in the studio side and the shop side completely independently of each other. And I can also you know kind of I can do that from my phone. I can do that from the thermostat on the wall, but. Uh, it's got electronic dampers, which allows that to happen. So it's a very nice system, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to looking forward to using it. This is the washer and dryer. So yeah, basically just a a very um, reasonably priced uh, stackable unit. Um, all I'm going to be doing out here is washing some dirty microfiber towels. So uh, I didn't need anything very big. Just just needed to, needed a washer and dryer, and this uh, this should be good. Now this is one thing you guys have not seen before. Um, it's another upgrade that I'm making. This is a mighty hot water extractor. It's a very big unit and I am gonna be moving to using this full time. Kind of saying goodbye to the Bissell, it's a little bit bittersweet, but uh, you will see this, uh, this bad boy in action uh, in, uh, in future videos. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll have more on that uh, kind of in future videos. I'll explain kind of you know in detail why I changed, but essentially this unit's gonna buy me more time it's not that it does a better job, it just buys me more time and time is the biggest enemy in my life, so it kind of just made sense. Okay, so moving around the room here, um, next up is the electrical panel. So this is a 200 amp panel. Uh, as you can see, not very full right now, but I've got uh, ample power. If there's uh, ever a need for, for more power in the future, well, I've got room for it. So that is that. And one thing you'll notice here, we've got this red, uh, red light bulb tied into the panel. So this bulb is basically the alarm system for the holding tank. So I've got it set right now, the float at about 75 to 80% capacity. So once it gets that full, this lights up red um, and that's when the tank needs to be emptied. So pretty self-explanatory, but um, yeah. And moving on from that, um, this right here is my sprinkler irrigation controller. Um, so if you guys watched the second channel, uh, you'd know the studio in the shop is sitting on my acreage. So got a whole bunch of irrigation uh, and sprinklers and, and uh, trees that I'm watering outside. So that's what I'm doing all of that from. And watering it, it's from the well. So I have a well drilled just behind the shop here. And um, yeah, this is the pressure tank for the well. And then and I got well water running outside for the irrigation. Uh, carrying on, I guess, so in terms of water, I also have a carbon filter, uh, filtering the water coming into the shop here. And this is a water heater. It's a 40 gallon electric uh, Bradford White water heater. Um, why'd you go electric? I don't know, I don't, uh, I don't detail every day, so it kind of seemed silly to have hot water sitting here all the time. So electric means I can just turn it on and off with a switch. Um, yeah, I don't know, seems smart. Uh, carrying on, now 
I get a lot of questions from people asking about hard water spots on vehicles. How do you get rid of hard water spots? Do you have hard water spots? The answer is no, I do not because I use a water softener. If you have hard water and you wash your vehicle and it dries, it's going to leave uh, hard water spots on your vehicle. It's just minerals that, uh, that are in the water. The water softener is gonna take all of that out. So leaves you with soft water. My water is gonna be very, very clean, if you will. Um, and I don't have, don't have those issues don't have hard water spots. Um, so that's kind of the way to kind of the way to solve it. And basically you put one of these bags of salt in the tank and uh, kind of just does its thing. So, all right, well carrying on, and I'm sure you guys have heard me say before that I love listening to music when I'm detailing. Um, honestly, I, I listen to music all the time, like 24 seven in my house. And so I went with uh, a home theater direct uh, whole house audio system. This is the exact same system that I have at the house, uh, same that I've been listening to in the garage for years. I bought the exact same one again, and um, yeah, just got this, just got this all hooked up uh, last week. Uh, if you've watched episode 12, you can see kind of um, kind of how it all gets gets hooked up. And um, yeah, I ran all the wiring for all the speakers in the building here. There's 12 speakers, 10 of them inside, two outside. Uh, Ran all the wiring for that. I think back in episode four, I was climbing around the rafters and, and whatnot, built a bunch of speaker boxes. But um, so what this is, is a six zone audio system. It's from HTD. And like I said, there are four speakers in the studio. There's six speakers in the shop. And then I got two on the outside of the, of the studio. And yeah, it's, it's a fantastic system for anyone who's, you know, thought about having a whole house audio system. I would highly recommend it. Equipment's great, everything's high quality, it works awesome. Um, and yeah, it's it's probably never getting turned off, so. All right, well that is going to wrap up the tour for you guys. And like I said earlier, I'm thrilled to finally be at the point where the studio is finished. It's been a ton of hard work to get here, but the work is not going to stop there. There's no question, I'll be detailing some really dirty and nasty vehicles in here. And thankfully you guys won't have to wait long. Next week's video will be filmed right here. So until then, thanks for tuning in and continuing to support the channel. It really means a lot. Be sure to smash the thumbs up button on this video. And yeah, I'm going to go put up some no mic allowed signs on the building and I'll see you guys in the next one. There. That ought to keep them away. No mic allowed? What is this? From his own brother, no less. Are you kidding me? I'm gonna get you back, Mitch, and you're not gonna like it.